On Tuesday, the Senate held the first in a series of congressional hearings on artificial intelligence. Sam Altman, CEO of the company that runs ChatGPT, was the star witness. Altman acknowledged the risks of AI, but believes its benefits are far more significant. Here's Scott McFarlane. A Senate hearing on artificial intelligence began artificially. Too often, we have seen what happens when technology outpaces regulation. The chairman played an AI-generated version of his own voice and words. Pretty impressive. Sam Altman, who operates the virally successful chat GPT, compared new advances in AI to the invention of the printing press, but acknowledged the risk. I think if this technology goes wrong, it can go quite wrong. Congress is concerned it risks waiting too long to pass laws to govern AI after failing years ago to set safety rules for social media. Uh, we should be concerned for our privacy, we should be concerned for our liberty, and uh, we should be concerned for our control over our lives. From the Even the industry itself is urging Congress to create safety rules, potentially requiring government approval for future AI innovations. How fast does Congress have to move on this to keep up? Uh, I think it's more important to get it right than to move super fast. The tech leaders and lawmakers also recognize the impact of AI on the human workforce. My biggest nightmare long term is displacement of workers and job losses. As Washington mulls its next move, schools nationwide, including Morgan State University in Baltimore, have rolled out new AI programs, training students how to find work in AI and to ensure it's inclusive. We don't know what AI is going to enable us to be able to do, so the workforce has to stay nimble. We have to always be learning new things and, and be willing to educate a new crop of, of, of individuals. And Scott McFarland joins us now. Scott, what's the ballpark of regulations uh, or incentives that Congress are thinking about enacting for artificial in intelligence companies? There are ideas being floated, John, like government safety labels for new AI technology, maybe government licensing of industries, maybe a federal agency to police the artificial intelligence industry and its major players here in the United States. This is such a strange dynamic here, though, John. There's unanimity, nonpartisan unanimity from Congress. They got to move on this. Even the industry is urging them to move on this. But what's holding it back is Congress acknowledges it doesn't really understand AI. There are some members who've worked on studying this, who've done their homework, who've done some research, and have done a lot of work to that end. But this is complex stuff. It's difficult to even describe, much less to legislate about. And that's the big stumbling block, one that doesn't often occur here. Is that, Scott, the idea behind having an agency? So I assume when they talk about agency, they're talking about something like the FCC um, that would be full of experts that could keep up with the pace of changing technology and tweak the laws or tweak the, the rulings in order to keep up with the fast pace of things because members of Congress just can't do it. That's exactly why they're talking about an agency. And in fact, they use the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission, as a reference point, an agency like the FCC. Some have proposed a cabinet level agency to give it the heft and might it might need. I mean, they were drawing an equivalence, John, between AI developments at this moment and the invention of the printing press, the advent of the Internet itself. They're underscoring the seminal moment we have entered, and there is no roadmap ahead legislatively. Altman was also asked about Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act, which, uh, before we lose all our, our, all our viewers, this is a section that protects social media companies, content providers, from anything that's said by one of its users that's libelous, so it protects the company. What was the root of that questioning for him uh, with artificial intelligence? Well, there is concern that Congress just missed the boat on passing safeguards and safety rules for social media. They don't want to replicate that mistake, so there's a lot of parallels being drawn. But what's more, there is concern that AI technology companies are not liable or might not be liable for things done with their technology, similar to how there's this debate over whether people who should be liable when people misuse or weaponize social media against others. That's where that parallel comes from. But the baseline concern is they're going to be too late, that they're going to miss this. And that is a growing concern. Speaking of missing things, there was also a discussion of copyright protections for artists who's, who fear that their work is being either sampled or scraped without compensation, that AI is using it and then creating something entirely new. 
Where, where was there unanimity or where, where were the senators on that issue? Yeah, that question came from the senator who represents the Country Music Hall of Fame in Tennessee, where music is written prodigiously and where there's concerns about intellectual property. But that really is a widespread concern held by many, if not all, here. And there was not a satisfying answer from this head of OpenAI. He says that they're engaged in conversations with the music industry, with musicians, to ensure that they're properly remunerated if there's some use of their music to create artificially new music. But there's just discussions at this point. There's nothing that's, you know, touchable, tangible. And we're getting far along in the process here. This stuff is getting popular and it's getting pervasive. What's more, <laughs> there's also a concern about who do you pay if AI creates great music, what if they create the next, you know, Paul McCartney uh, majesty on, on, on the music page? Who gets the money? They got to rectify that issue, too, and they're nowhere right now in doing so. A lot of road ahead of us. Scott McFarlane on Capitol Hill. Thanks a lot, Scott.